Hi everyone, it's Sheila here. It is the third Sunday of Easter. Yes, we're still celebrating Easter. Remember, we celebrate this until Pentecost, which is the birthday of our church. So we're going to pull out the uh, good news pamphlet that says April 18th, and this is what it looks like. Got it? So let's start with an opening prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus, help us to listen to the stories about you. And thank you for the many ways you are with us. Help us to remember your Holy Week, your Last Supper, Good Friday, Holy Saturday, and of course, you're dying on the cross for us. Help us to remember that through the stories in the Bible and the stories we share with one another and our loved ones. Spread your love every day. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. So we're going to start. We're going to start on the front page. Okay. All right. We're going to start on the front page. And it looks like, it looks like we're at Mass. Looks like we're in church. And I see a priest. And, oh, I see a lot of things. I see a baptismal font. I see an Easter candle. And let's see, I see a cross. I see a tabernacle. And what else do I see here? Let's see, let's look at all this. I wanna help you. Because a lot of us aren't, aren't in church because of everything. So let's look here. These are great memories right? Because we haven't been in church together. So here it's a lovely family from the church bringing up the gifts. And it's a young girl bringing up the host to be consecrated. They're not the body of Christ yet. They have to be consecrated by the priest, but they're hosts. Just like this, her mom is bringing up the wine to be consecrated into the blood of Christ. And her dad is bringing up our uh, collection, our offertory to give to the church, all right? So I see that. I also see back here a baptismal font. You know, when you come into church and you have a baptismal font filled with holy water that we baptize you in, we also come in there to bless ourselves because the water's been blessed. And you bless yourself in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit when you come into Mass and when you leave Mass. I will say during Lent, it's not there. So you might want to remember that next year. All right, um, the cross shows us the love Jesus has for us and that he died on it. It's over here, you see that? And your uh, Easter candle, we get a new one every Easter. And that here reminds us of his resurrection, how he rose from the dead on the third day, which was Easter Sunday and how miraculous that was. <clears throat> Let's see. Here's the tabernacle. Do you ever see the tabernacle? It's right behind the altar at our church. Beautiful gold box. And what's in the tabernacle? Once a host right here is consecrated and turned into the body of Christ. And if we, we go to communion and if there's any left over then they are placed in the tabernacle because it's the living body of Christ. And you'll know that there is a living body of Christ in there because the light will be on. That's how you know Jesus is alive in here. That's a cool little thing. It's a sacristy light. Look for that. All right. And we have the baptismal fonts. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think what else. Money, gifts. We support the church. People. Oh. I know. You see people in here, they're singing. Here's a, a, a missile. It has all of our readings in it. All right. And then there's people just being kind to one another in here. Maybe talking. They shouldn't be talking, but at least being there with one another. It's our community, our church community. And it says on the bottom, what do you see and hear at Mass that helps you remember Jesus? I love seeing this picture. It's a great memory when we're all together as our church family. 
And when we go to Mass and we, we receive the body and blood of Christ and we say amen, which we're going to talk about today, reminds us to go out and to spread the word that we're supposed to do. It's like a, it's rejuvenating to go to Mass and receive that and go out and spread that word. All right, so let's turn the page over and we're going to read a story before we get to the gospel reading. And this is what it looks like. It says, Remembering Buddy. Looks like we're going to hear a story about a dog. It may not be a very happy story, but let's see if we can relate this story to Jesus. So be thinking as I read it. All right. Jason picked up a shovel and followed his dad to the pasture. Can you read the word on that big rock, dad asked. Do you see this word here? It says, Howie. Howie was our dog before you were, you were born, said Dad. We buried him here. Can we bury Buddy next to him, Jason asked. I thought you might like that idea, answered Dad. Jason helped Dad dig a hole for Buddy in the soft black earth. I'll go get Buddy, Dad said, when the hole was big enough. Jason's eyes filled with tears. Think of good things about Buddy while I'm gone. He walked to the truck to get Buddy. Jason imagined Buddy running in the tall grass. Buddy loved to run. Jason sat down in the tall grass. He remembered the day he and Buddy went hiking. Buddy had stopped suddenly and started to bark and growl. Just then, a snake glided by and disappeared under some leaves. Jason shivered to think he might have stepped on the snake. Buddy was brave, he said quietly. Jason lay back in the grass and remembered how Buddy stayed near his bed when he was sick. He smiled as he remembered how much Buddy liked ice cream. Jason, where are you, Dad called. Jason stood up. Dad had Buddy in his arms. He lay Buddy down on the grass. Buddy, Jason helped wrap a sheet around Buddy and lay him in the hole. He picked some blue flowers and dropped them on the sheet. Then they filled the hole with dirt and stomped it down. We'll make a stone for Buddy later, said Dad. Now tell me some of the good things about Buddy. He always met my school bus. He loved to play fetch and he licked Mom's bowl of whipped cream. You can keep Buddy alive in your memory, said Dad. Let's go tell Mom these stories. And Jason smiled and said, let's do. So how do stories help us remember a loved one? Well, every week at church, we have a, we have a reading from the Old Testament and a reading from the New Testament. And then we have the gospel reading. And that gospel reading always, always, always comes from one of the four Gospels and has to do with Jesus. So through those stories, we learn and remember how miraculous and loving Jesus was as the Son of God. And we learn about his mother and his disciples and everything about him and how he, he impacts our life to this day to make good choices. So we also, every week at Mass, and some of you are preparing to do it this year, maybe you'll do it next year, but when you receive the body and blood of Christ at Mass, when you have Eucharist, you're, you're committing to living the life Jesus wanted us to live and to doing his good deeds. The church knows that the Lord comes even now in his Eucharist and that he is there in our midst. We await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. So I know it's sad to lose a pet. I lost a pet last year that I loved very much. Her name was Charlie. And we weren't expecting her to, to go so soon. But we have great memories of Charlie. And we talk about her all the time. She, was, she used to follow me everywhere. And she'd sleep with me every night. And the kindest, sweetest dog she listened so well to. She never took off. She did. She did like to chase the squirrels, though. I will say that. But 
she still listened. So just a fun dog. I think about how she was such a part of our family. So there's a lot of things that we can remember and stories that we can always share. And that's what we've done as a church all these years is pass them down and share them. And that's how we continue to share our love for Christ. So turn over the next page because I would like to read the gospel reading to you. This is a good one. I love this gospel reading. So we're going to read the gospel from the book of Luke, 24th chapter, verses 35 to 48. Jesus lives. Two of Jesus's friends had just come back to Jerusalem. They told the others about meeting Jesus on the road to Emmaus. They had recognized him when he broke bread with them. Suddenly, Jesus was in the room with them. He said, peace be with you. One of the disciples said, I saw Jesus die on the cross. How can this be Jesus? Is he a ghost? Jesus, look at my hands and touch my feet. Touch me and believe I'm really here. The second disciple said, I can hardly believe it's you, Jesus. Jesus said, do you have something to eat? And the disciple, next disciple said, here is some fish. And they all watched Jesus eat. Jesus said, do you remember the things I had told you? I had to suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. Now go out and tell all people my good news. You are my witnesses. How do you think Jesus helped his friends believe he's there? He showed them he could eat. He showed them his scars from his, and from his wounds in his hands and probably in his side. And what was so special that they had to do what Jesus wanted them to do when they left. It was a really important job, just like we should do every day. We go out and we share his good news. We share his, his love through our family, our friends, strangers, no matter what, we share his love. The real presence is the bread and wine truly becoming through the power of the Holy Spirit, the body and blood of Jesus Christ at mass. All right. So you think about it, just like when I tell my kids every day, go make good choices. It's what Jesus would want. And are you living the life that Jesus wants us to live, which is a good life? And I say a good life, a pure life, an honest life, and a loving life. Okay, let's turn the page, please. Last page. The last page looks like this. And it says, some of Jesus's friends thought he was a ghost when they saw him after Easter. He ate food and let them let him, them touch him. This helped him believe, helped them believe he was really there. We believe in Jesus. We believe Jesus is really with us in Holy Communion. And this is called his real presence. All right. So I cut out these four pictures already and I placed them here. I used it from another page. And we're going to cut them out and we're going to match it to the words below. So the first picture, it says, we receive the body of Christ right here. Through ah, ah, ah. Sorry, that was my dog. We receive the blood of Christ right here in this chalice. Then we say, amen. You say amen when you go to communion. You say amen for the communion of the body of Christ, and as well as the communion of the body, the blood of Christ. And then we go out and we share God's love. We spread the good news. That's all. It's that simple. That simple. Very easy to do. I would like to share real quick in your book, in your big green book. Can you go to page 14? One, four, 14. All right, so I'm going to read this little section here that says, Amen. You say amen at the end of many prayers. You say amen when you receive Holy Communion. 
it means this is so, or I believe this. It means I believe I am, I am receiving the body and blood of Christ. This is so. This is what I believe. You're acknowledging that and you're confirming it by saying, Amen. Now, I'd like you to turn to page 19, 1, 9. I just want to show you here. We had Easter. Now we're in the Easter season. And this is the Easter candle we get every year at Easter. It's a new candle that burns down for the year at church. So notice that next time, either in church or you're watching the video of Mass. All right. Okay. I will see you next week. Have a blessed week. Make good choices. Remember. Remember, go out and spread God's love. Amen.